Hey everybody, welcome back. We are beginning uh, Unit 3, Video 1 here, um, and this is about uh, the periodic table organization and its properties, all right? So let's go ahead. There's some things we're going to need to talk about before we can really get much further into chemistry, so here we go. All right, so first things first, you're going to need to know the difference between groups and periods on the periodic table, all right? So groups, um, think of them as the columns, okay? Um, they go up and down, all right? These guys are also known as families. And just like in your family, okay, you may have similar characteristics as your brother or sister or whoever it may be, okay? These elements on the periodic table also have similar characteristics as they go up and down a family, all right? So the next one, which we'll talk about, is the periods, okay? Those are the rows, meaning they go left to right, all right? Um, and there are seven periods on the periodic table. All right, so here, groups. All right, here, whoop, uh, periods, sorry. All right, so um, again, groups and families, groups, families, however you want to, you know, say them, they have the similar characteristics, okay? And the periods, like we said, one through seven, here they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? But before we move on, I want to go ahead and break down the periodic table even a little more into the metals and non-metals. So there is a dividing line on the periodic table, which we sometimes call the, the stair step line because it does look like, when you draw it in, it looks like a staircase, all right? So this is what's going to divide our periodic table in the, into the main types of elements we have, okay? Which the first one being metals, okay? If they are on the left side of that stair step line, they are the metals. If they are on the right side, so this group over here, they are the non-metals, okay? So you need to keep those two separate. Now you'll notice the elements right here that are on the stair step line, and they're a little bit different colored, okay? Um, there's a reason for that. These are what we call the metalloids. We call them metalloids because they have uh, characteristics of both the metals and the nonmetals, okay? So just make sure we keep that in mind that these guys we know as the metalloids, okay? All right? So there's a, a little bit of a breakdown just the beginning of a periodic table. So go ahead and try these practice questions on your own, and I'll be back shortly. Go ahead and pause it. All right, so identify which two elements are most similar uh, chemically. So again, the ones that are similar are going to be in the same family. So if we were to start looking through all these, we would see that actually magnesium and calcium are very similar. That is because they are in the same group or family, the columns that go up and down, okay? B, you're going to look at your elements here again, see which ones are the most chemically similar. So for this one, if we look through all these, we'll see that bromine and chlorine right here are in the same family, therefore they are going to be most similar. Metals on the left or right side of the periodic table? Well, when we broke this down, we saw that over here was all the metals. Metals on the left, okay? So what are the group numbers for the transition metals? They are group numbers three through 12, okay? So it starts right in here, three, we go to 4, so on and so forth, all the way to 12. All right, next is your uh, characteristics of your different groups or your families, okay? So uh, some of the key things, well, you need to get all these right now. You're going to have to know many of these, but some of the key things are uh, beginning with the names, okay? You must know that the group 1, that first group family, right on the, the far left of the periodic table is known as alkaline metals. Group two, alkaline earth metals. Group three through 12 that we just talked about, whoop, transition metals. Group 17, these are non-metals. 
Um, and then group 18 are your noble gases, as well as uh, the non-metals. All right, so metals to the left, non-metals to the right of the stair step. Okay. So go ahead and get the rest of this down. Uh, I'll pause it, and then we'll come back and talk about it again. Okay, so um, you should have paused this and written all this down. Um, and you can see some other characteristics. Like you'll notice that all of the metals are solid, except, of course, for mercury there. Okay, and then when you get to the non-metals, group 17 and 18, we've got a little bit of a variety in the, in the halogen group. And then in the noble gases, group 18, well, just like it says in their name, noble gases, they are gases, all right? Um, and then you can obviously see which ones conduct electricity. Notice, metals conduct electricity. Non-metals do not conduct electricity. All right, let's look at the reactivity. Uh, this is very important. You'll need to know that these alkali metals, your first family, first group, are highly reactive, okay? They, they want to react, they want to mix with other things, they want to, like y'all say, blow up, okay? Um, and then as you go uh, to the right on the periodic table, they become less reactive, okay? Until we get back over to the nonmetals, and we'll notice, um, you know, they get a little bit more reactive. These, these become more reactive here. Uh, but then, by the time we get to the noble gases in group 18, these guys, keywords here, are very unreactive, or the correct term for it is inert. Okay, so they don't want to react with anybody. They don't want anything to do with anybody else, all right? Okay, moving on. All right, so here's some of your defining terms that you're going to uh, need to be aware of and make sure you understand. So the first one is malleable, all right? Ability to be hammered into sheets without breaking. Ductile. Ability to be stretched out into wires. And luster, the shininess. Now when we're talking about these, obviously most of these are regarding the metals on the periodic table, okay? So go ahead, take a minute, use the uh, chart on the previous page to help you answer these next questions. Go ahead and pause it and I'll be back with the answers. periodic trends. These are things that are um, things that go on in the periodic table and how they work as we go to the left or to the right or up or down or whatever it is. So um, we're going to go over a few of these and in more detail, okay? So here we go. All right, so first one that we're going to look at, I'm going to move this thing all over the place, is atomic radius, okay, or atomic radii. So what is it exactly? Well, it is the radius, uh, the distance measured from the center of one atom to the center of an adjacent identical atom. Okay, so when you're doing these trends, um, it's important that we just, we remember the trend across the periodic table, down the periodic table, so on and so forth. So as we go this direction on the periodic table, as we go to the right of the periodic table, okay, atomic radius, or radii, excuse me, either way, is going to decrease. All right, as we go down the periodic table, it is going to increase, okay? And uh, we'll practice uh, determining these and looking at these more in class, all right? So what is the trend? Just like I said, um, it decreases across the period due to the increased number of protons having a greater pull on the valence electrons. And it uh, increases down the group, okay? So keeping that in mind, that's your atomic radii trend. It decreases going across the periodic table and it increases going down. Your next one is ionization energy. So 
Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove one outermost electron, okay? Um, is it difficult to remove an electron or is it not? Does the atom have a good grasp on it? Okay, and a lot of it is going to um, depend on basically the size of the atom itself, okay? How far are the electrons from the nucleus? All right, so for this one, um, it's going to increase across the period. So as we go this direction, as we go across the period here, it's going to increase, okay? As we go down a group or this direction, okay, it's going to decrease, all right? Okay? All right, so think of it this way. Um, as we go this direction on the periodic table, as we go to across the periodic table, I should say, and this ionization energy is increasing, think of it this way. Your electrons, because the, the atom itself is getting smaller, your electrons are much closer to the nucleus, all right? So that nucleus has, think of it like it has a firm grip on that electron, okay? So it's, it's difficult to take that electron away, okay? Uh, it'd be like a child having their candy over here, like what's a, a, a peppermint piece of candy or something, okay? If, it, if it's in their hand, they've got a tight grip on it, you're going to have a hard time getting that piece of candy away from them, okay? Because it's very close to them. But as we go down the periodic table this direction, okay, our, our atomic radii, our, ato our atoms uh, get larger. So those electrons are further away from the nucleus, meaning it's easier, okay, to remove an electron from it. It'd be like the child, instead of having the candy in their hand over here, it'd be like it, oh, I don't know, sitting on the kitchen table, okay? You have more control of taking it away. It's easier to take it away, okay? So there's your ionization energy. All right, your next one is electronegativity. All right, and it's the attraction an atom has to a nearby elect, uh, electron, excuse me. Okay, um, and the way to think of this one is the fact that um, another, an atom wants another electron so badly. Okay, how bad does it want another electron? Whether it's to complete its eight valence electron shell, a uh, full outer shell. Um, so think of it that way, okay? How badly an, elect, uh, an atom wants an electron, all right? So for this one, as you go this way, across the periodic table, the electronegativity increases, okay? These guys, as we go this direction, they want an electron even more and more and more, okay? And one thing you do need to remember, and you will see this quite often, is that fluorine right here is your most electronegative element on the periodic table, okay? And as we go down this direction, okay, our electronegativity decreases, all right? Okay, and then the last one, ionic radius. What is it exactly? Well, it's size of an atom's ion, okay? So an ion is when we've got atoms that have either uh, gained or lost electrons. As they do that, it is going to change the size of the atom, which when they gain or lose, it becomes an ion, okay? So for example, you can see in this one right here, the sodium atom is getting rid of this one, all right, this electron here. When it does, it loses this full outer shell so that we end up with this over here. So it's actually getting smaller, okay? So as we uh, go this way on a periodic table, or this way on a periodic table, it's a little different, okay? It kind of, um, it kind of depends, okay? But as we go down um, a group or family, it's going to increase, okay, the ionic radius, all right? But then when we start talking about cations, anions, are they metals, are they gonna gain or lose electrons? Are they non-metals, are they gonna gain or lose electrons? Then that's going to change whether or not, um, we're getting a smaller or bigger radius, okay? So we'll go further into that in class. All right, so here's a practice sheet for you. Um, you can kind of either use the ones we've drawn out already, or you can kind of look at this little graph. It's a similar one, okay, to help you answer these questions. So I'll go ahead and pause it and you give it a try. Okay, so uh, for the first question, 
we should have gotten rubidium is larger. Largest element, cesium. Most electronegative, we talked about that one. Fluorine. How is ionic radius different from atomic radius? Well, remember, the ionic radius is of an ion, okay? The atomic radius is of just the atom before it has lost or gained electrons. Which element has the highest ionization energy? Okay. The electrons are closer to the nucleus, so it's harder to remove from gallium. Which element has a higher ionization energy out of lithium and rubidium? Okay, electrons are closer, again, so it's harder to uh, take them away. And how are the electronegativity and ionization energy related? Okay, um, they, they show the same trend. Uh, they both increase or decrease the same way as we go up or down a periodic table. So they have the same trend. Okay. All right, guys, that's the end of video one.